They're popping up all over the country, and they all look exactly the same. This generic aesthetic isn't necessarily bad, but if I had to choose a picture to sit next to the definition of meh in the architecture dictionary, I'd definitely choose this. These bland, mixed-use, but often residential buildings are the result of a popular construction technique sweeping the nation. A technique that relies on a particular legal loophole. In the late 1980s, the American housing market was pretty dysfunctional, and the lack of affordable housing was a huge issue. The biggest constraint in the U.S. housing market at the time was space. But there was actually plenty of physical space. Developers just weren't allowed to use it. That's because many cities zoned their land with an overwhelming preference for detached single-family homes. For example, in Seattle, almost three quarters of residential land is zoned for single-family homes. Only small strips in downtowns and densely populated areas were zoned for large multi-story towers. Growing housing demand brought on by demographic shifts, job growth patterns, and a renewed desire for urban living was making this problem seriously pressing. And the dual pressure of code constraints and growing demand created another problem, cost. So with that in mind, let's head to Hawaii. LA architect Tim Smith was on vacation. His company, Tagawa Smith Martin Inc., was working on a project for the city of Los Angeles on a possible 100-unit affordable housing high-rise in Little Tokyo that had been going nowhere. It was a thorn in his side. Smith said that they could never even get to the stage of penciling it out. So he was taking a well-deserved break in Hawaii. His slightly questionable choice of beach reading was the latest LA building code that had been released the month before. He noticed that it had changed the classification of fire retardant treated wood to non-combustible. This was a big change. Previously, building codes stated that wood-framed buildings could only be two stories. But a building constructed with non-combustible wood, on the other hand, was now allowed to reach five stories if it had a sprinkler system. Before that, only steel beams and cement pillars were viable framing options, which are expensive. Tim Smith, in a stroke of genius, took it a step further. He realized that if he first laid a concrete podium floor, he could then construct five stories of wood-framed building above. This allowed buildings to be taller, wider, and cheaper, and only 60% the cost of masonry framing. And so in 1996, the first building constructed using this new method opened its doors, Casa Hiwa in Los Angeles. Soon, this type of building became incredibly popular. Builders on the West Coast could now get to near high-rise densities at the coveted wood frame price point. But architects on the East Coast were working in denser cities with more building codes. After adjustments to federal building codes in 2000, this style of construction began to spread across the country and to the East Coast. They became known as five over ones or one plus fives, not because it was five wooden stories and one concrete story, but because the wood frame construction was a type five in the international building codes and the retail and commercial space in the concrete podium was a type one. But the IBC still had some things to say. Codes mandated a modulated facade to avoid repetition and having it look like this. Cheap flat windows were easy to install and cheap face options like hardy panels, which run roughly $16 per square foot, were necessary to cut costs. After all, the next upgrade, metal siding, costs from $25 to $50 a square foot, potentially more than triple the cost. Codes also mandated that the five over ones have a certain percentage of the building be parking, depending on the district. Where the minimum percentage is high, like Texas, the best solution can be wrapping the building around a parking garage, a style known as the Texas Donut. When they're lower, the ground floor podium suffices, like the LA Dingbat. 
A four-story Texas donut can get 50 or 60 apartments onto an acre of land, while a West Coast version with a two-story podium, which became legal in the late 2000s, can get almost 200. The building was gaining in popularity among architects through the early 2000s, but really took off after the 2008 recession. Demand for cheap housing was higher than ever before. It sparked a flame that just kept growing. In 2017, 187,000 new housing units were completed in buildings of 50 units or more in the U.S., the most since the Census Bureau started keeping track in 1972. It's a result of the combination of increases in high-rise skyscrapers and the adoption of the 5 over 1 method. Even though they aren't that cute, it seems like they filled the need and helped the U.S. housing market bounce back by providing affordable housing. What could be wrong with that? Unfortunately, a lot. Wood has a lot of benefits, obviously. Cheap, easy to use. But it also has some serious downsides. Wood expands and contracts when weather and moisture fluctuate causing the types of rigid materials used on building surfaces to pull apart at their seams, leaving cracks that rain can penetrate. Obviously, this causes water damage, mold, mildew, and lots and lots of repairs, especially in areas with temperature fluctuations and a lot of rain. Only a few materials can survive that kind of strain. Coincidentally, the number one choice is hardy panels. So we're back on the boring side of things. Because everything comes in pairs, the other big problem with 5 over 1s is with fire. They are viewed as a very high fire risk because in 2017, there were 13 fires that resulted in damages over $20 million. Six of those were 5 over 1s. There have been attempts to ban these buildings in the Atlanta suburbs, but they were turned over by Georgia legislature. So while wood is cheaper, it definitely has its downsides. And because of the necessity of wood to reduce price, the buildings have to have the same exteriors to solve problems that wood causes. And their efficiency and cost keeps them cropping up all over the US. Are they an eyesore? Yeah, a lot of people believe that they are. But there are benefits to cheap and useful housing in such a tight market, as long as they're not dangerous to occupants. But now you know, it's not a glitch in the matrix. It's just a byproduct of the US housing market. Have you ever seen a five over one and wondered what the heck that was? Let us know in the comments and make sure you tune in to Cheddar Originals Wednesdays at 8 p.m.